Hey everybody and welcome back to Misclick's D&D Devotion. So, um, we were talking musical instruments during the break. Have you guys decided, the two bards, on what musical instruments you would like? I'm also going to share this uh, this link to all the musical instruments oh. in chat because it's really fun. Uh, I had a question before I make my final decisions on musical instruments, Neil. I need yes. you to hear one as well before you do. The rush fight. Or whatever. I did listen to that one. I like it. Uh, I propose that spoken word falls under singing. In what way? In that I can be a singer and spoken word performer with one musical instrument slot. I guess I don't understand what spoken word is. The same way that I could be a singer and a rapper yeah. at the sure. same time. That's all fine with me. I think singing has to do with being able to... Actually, maybe not. Because in my mind, singing is being able to hit very specific notes. But all here in Spoken Word... There's so much more in singing than just that. You learn all types of singing. So. Right. So I, I, I really am musically uninclined. I, I, can, I will play devil's advocate with you guys. But I don't really know anything about music. Singing well, or instruments. I would say that if we're talking about slots and we're calling them musical instrument slots, the same way that I could play a lute in a classical style or a rock and roll style, I could use my voice, the instrument, in many different styles as well. I could yes. be an opera singer, I could be a metal screamer. So I propose that spoken word falls under the ways that you could use your voice, the instrument, because I. I wouldn't have to take like rock guitar as one and classical guitar as another one. I would just have to take guitar, the instrument. Right. I agree I, with you that there are different types of musical production that I would have to be trained for, but since the mechanic does not allow for- Well, we could do, you could do like opera singer, you could do, um, Versus but you've never rapper. made me just like you've never made me choose one kind of singing before. Right. Well, we've never. I mean, we don't have to. If you want, we can. You can do that, or you can spend a another slot and get all the you know three different types of singing or two different types of singing. Um, I'm, I'm just saying. I think my here. voice, my voice counts as a slot. That's sure. What I'm sure. All. Okay. Sure. Why not? Sweet. Thanks, Neil. Merry Christmas. To this session. Uh. I love that we're listening to this like chorus music. Um, so let's go down the line, uh, starting with Trump SC. How are you on your non-weapon proficiency slots? Are they pretty much wrapped up? Yeah, I got them. Um, I was just cool. Uh, let me get to my character sheet, wherever it is. Oh, I tucked it somewhere over... Ah, here. Okay. Uh, so I spent a massive six non-weapon proficiencies on armor smithing, blacksmithing, and weapon smithing. Wow. And then with my other three, since I'm an intelligent fighter, I took gaming, set snares, and ropies. Fantastic. Now... We should call you the smith. You're just smithing everything. Uh, you are a fighter, and fighters have a little something special about them. You get four weapon proficiencies, but because you're a fighter, if you don't want to use all four of those on weapons, you can use the leftovers on non-weapons. Um, that is a, a fighter-only thing. You're definitely gonna wanna spend at least two for weapons because you can specialize in a weapon with two slots, which makes you significantly better. More attacks, more better hit, better damage, all that sort of thing. Um, so if you want to keep putting more things into non-weapons, you can, or you can save those and be a better combat specialist. Uh, hmm. Let's move on to V. Uh, are you all skilled out or are you still working on it? Um, I think well, I have to, to make sure we had Anna. Okay. I'll skip over to Jen. Okay. Living Pink, I see two. Yes. 
Why do you want to know what my are, weapons are? Are you, are you done with all of your non-weapons? Have you figured it out? Yeah. yeah, I got etiquette, reading and writing, religion, healing, anatomy, and swimming. Fantastic. I think my character likes to go swimming. That's why. Nice. Swimming is fun. <laughs> dangerous. Anna, you and V are still working your stuff out? I think I'm good. I have gaming, reading and writing, animal handling, musical instruments for two, acting, and blind fighting. And my musical abilities are voice, lute, and hurdy-gurdy. Hurdy-gurdy. V? Uh, okay. So... Mine are dancing, disguise, acting, gaming, animal handling, reading and writing, and my three instruments of singing, ocarina, and the harp. Okay. So it looks like we've all got our non-weapon proficiencies down. Let's talk weapon proficiencies. Um, Anna, Jen, and V, you all get two non-weapon proficiencies. Um, so you can learn how to use two different weapons, or you can learn how to use one weapon and one weapon or uh, one fighting style. Trump, you get four. You... Uh, we'll, we'll get into fighting styles in just a moment. Trump, you get four, and you're allowed to specialize in a weapon, which gives you an extra attack every other round, and a bonus of one to hit, and a bonus of two to damage. So I highly recommend the specialization. Um, as for weapon f uh, fighting styles, there are a few of them. Where are they hiding them? Under. There we go. Specialization and fighting styles. So you can get the... Uh, weapon and shield style, where if you have a, a weapon and a shield, in addition to making attacks with your weapon every round, you can also make a, a punch with your shield or a bash with your shield um, and still keep using your shield as a weapon for uh, as a armor for that round. Um, you can use the one handed weapon style where you just use a weapon in one hand, but you're good enough with it that it gives you a little bit of bonus to your armor class, like your, your blocking and kind of fencing is good enough that it gives you a bonus of one to your AC. You can use the two weapon style where you fight with two weapons at once. Um, there's penalties involved, and if you take the two weapon fighting style, those penalties are reduced fairly, severe, uh, fairly dramatically. There's the two-handed weapon style where if you're using a big two-handed weapon, it's just a lot faster for you to use because you're better with them. Or if you're using um, a some sort of weapon that could be used in one hand or two, like you've got a long sword and you could, it's normally a one-handed weapon, but there's room for a second hand to get in there. It'll increase the damage if you use your one-handed weapon two-handed. Um, and then there's the like uh, archery or thrown weapon style, where if you have a bow, normally you can make two attacks or you can take a half move and make one attack, or you can take a full move and make zero attacks. But if you take the missile fighting style, the archery style or whatever, uh, you can make both your attacks and a half move, or you can take a full move and get one of your attacks. So it just makes you able to move and shoot a little bit easier. Um, and then there are- a fun question for you. Yes. Are firearms in your world? No, we're not going to use firearms. Um, I have a new weapon table for you guys to look at as well. Um, a lot of things have been updated since we started uh, Seaborn. We've got some new gear. Um, we've simplified the weapon system, reducing the number of entries in the table, but allowing us to kind of expand on any of them. So you'll notice that there is something in here called an arming sword. That's the equivalent of your long sword. That's like a knight's sword. It's a more accurate historical term. Um, but if you wanted to say use a scimitar, you can say you have a scimitar proficiency, and we're just gonna 
use the stats under arming sword. So if you want to do some sort of like exotic weapon, we'll just find the closest thing in here that matches to it and then use that. Um, so I've sent you a list in Zoom. You might have to go to the very bottom to the tabs and click on the weapons tab. I don't know if the, the tab will follow. I think it does though. Um, so those are the basic types of weapons you can learn. Um, yeah. So there's a couple ideas. Is there a significance to them being in red? Uh, red weapons in red require a weapon smith to make. Um, the other ones, just a, any old blacksmith can do a, a good enough job. But a weapon smith would be required to make the good, uh, the other ones. Mm -hmm. What are you guys looking for? Considering I'm ambidextrous, is there something cool I could do with like two weapons? Five? Yes. So, yeah, if since you're ambidextrous, if you take the two weapon style as well, um, you basically suffer no penalties with either attacks. So you get two weapons, and you can make one attack with each of them in a round, um, which is pretty good. Uh, you are a cleric. So, do you have a specific god that you are following since you are a cleric? Reluna. Reluna, the god of passion. Um, uh, let's see, there should be some sort of weapon restrictions. Uh, I, I had an idea of an item I could use which seemed super versatile and fun. Oh, uh, which one? Uh, Chakram? Uh, Chakram. Yeah. Yeah, shotguns are like awesome. Fun. It seems exotic and like you can probably fight close range, but throw them when you're pissed off or something. <laughs> uh, they're mainly throwing Shocker. weapons. Oh. Uh, it's like a throwing star? Uh, it's a throwing disc. It's what Xena uses. Oh, sick. Yeah. Cool. But then what's the two weapon? weapon style part. I guess it's not it, right? Right. Well, just because you're ambidextrous doesn't mean you have to be a two weapon style fighter. But it sounds like fun too. What about... Uh... Well, you could use two weapons and then have a chakram as like your throne thing. So you could fight with like a short sword and a dagger and throw a chakram. Yeah. Um... And then that means I have no shield. Well, you're... Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Shields are nice, though. Yeah, well, I... <laughs> um, let's see. Ah, let's go with two weapon style. It sounds seems like fun. Okay. So the rule for fighting with two weapons is that they must be one must be bigger than the other. So the, your your offhand is always going to be a smaller weapon. So if you're going to use like an arming sword, then your offhand can be a short sword. But if your main hand is going to be a short sword, then your offhand's got to be like a dagger. Um, you are a cleric, one. so your yeah. rules are you must choose bludgeoning weapons. So you couldn't use actually a sword, yeah. but you could use like a mace and a club. Because a mace is medium. I guess a club is medium too. Are there any bludgeoning small weapons? You could use like a, a mace and a hammer. If you wanted. Let me Google those. Hmm? We'll see what they look like. Oh, wow, amazing. That's pretty cool. Neil, December had dual light crossbows, right? Is that what she, she did? She had um, hand crossbows. They're not on this list. Um, if it's something you would like, we can add them back in. This is a, a list I use for my other campaigns, but I'm willing to bend these rules for this edition of Misclicks. Um, so a crossbow is a two-handed weapon, then? Yeah, it takes one hand to hold the butt and one hand to hold the shaft. Mm-hmm. I think I might go with crossbow. I think that feels like my style. That's cool. Crossbows actually require zero weapon proficiencies in, in our rule here, our system here. Oh. Crossbows are, anyone can pick up a crossbow and know how to use it. It's 
Sick. Yeah, there's no training involved. It's a point and click interface. <laughs> cool. Um, so you go ahead and pick up to two other weapons. Um, and again, these are just kind of examples. If you want to pick something that's outside of this, that's a little more exotic, we'll find something that matches and use the stat block from the thing that matches it. Okay. So rate of fire is two better or is half better? Two is better. That's number of attacks per round. So if it's a two attack, so rate of fire on the longbow says two. Does that mean I get two and then three as a uh, fighter? Uh, it means you get two attacks every round with it. If you specialize in longbow, let me see. Um, missile weapons have a slightly different rate of fire increase. Um, uh, levels 1 through 6, it's just a flat 2. Level 7 through 12, it goes up to a flat 3 with missile weapons. Um, so you don't quite get the rate of fire bonus that you do with melee weapons um, when you specialize in them. Got it. It's worth noting that if you get a thrown weapon like a dagger, there is a rate of fire increase. Daggers normally get two attacks per round, but if you get are specialized, then it becomes three per round. But then if you're not throwing it, if you're using it in melee combat, you still get the bonus of um, the, the other combat bonuses. Because you don't get the, the attack and damage bonuses for thrown, um, but you would get them. So you can get like a mixed combat if you get a weapon that can be stat, uh, used in melee or thrown. Okay, and for fighters, it's a uh, general rule that it's extra attack every two rounds. Yes, for melee weapons. Okay. Do you link the weapons itself? Because I'm not, I just see gear on the. Uh, at the very bottom, there's a couple of tabs. You're going to want to go to weapons. The, the very below the, the table, bottom of your browser, above your taskbar. Can I get the thing that's cool? It's like polearm Bekta whatever. Bekta Corbin? Yeah, it seems like. Yeah. You can use a Bekta Corbin. What's that? It is bludgeoning. It is. <laughs> looking for bludgeoning large. Uh, it is a... Think of it as like a, a war hammer on a stick with a spike on the end of it. Hmm. Um, it was historically used, I think, for like dismounting knights and reaching people in hard to get places. So it's a pretty long weapon, great for outdoor fighting, um, terrible for indoor fighting. Oh, so I can't, like, dual wield that? No, it would, it takes ah, two hands. damn it. Never mind. I'm trying to find, like, a combo of bludgeoning things. So you said, like, a quarter staff? Different roll 20 than this quick one. Oh, I see a shovel in there, Neil. Seems like someone changed their minds. Oh my god, do you want to have this conversation again? No, I don't. Shovels shovel. can do d4, they cannot do d8. <laughs> but what about battle shovels, Neil? But they can do d4 damage. <laughs> uh, you were just saying that daggers can be thrown or used in melee, but I see dagger or throwing dagger. Are they different? They are. Um... Your normal dagger is just a standard dagger. A throwing dagger is very different. It doesn't have the cross guard. It's a very flat thing with kind of a ring at the end of it. It's balanced very well for throwing, but you wouldn't want to hold on to it and stab anyone with it because your hand could slip and cut across the blade. But I can still cut, I can still throw normal daggers. Right, they're not as well balanced for that. So they've got a lower rate of fire, um, but, but you can still throw them. My proficiency would be dagger, and I could use either one? Yes. Okay. And then you said that I can use another slot to be, like, extra proficient in dagger daggery. Um, right? So you could take a, a fighting style to go along with that. Yeah. So if you take the... Um, the missile or thrown fighting style... Uh, that means when you throw your daggers, you can move farther and still make more, uh, still make m multiple attacks. Okay. Um, or you could take the expertise, which just generally ups your rate of attack to. Let's dagger thrown. 
prone is three. So if you're a dagger expertise, expert dagger, instead of a specialist of dagger, um, you get three dagger throws per round. But if you do a half move, that cuts to half rounded down. So if you do a half move, then you only get one. If you do a full move, you get zero. Whereas if you are uh, proficient with dagger and you have a missile fighting style, you throw two per round. If you do a half move, you can still throw two. Or if you do a full move, you do one. So okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, cool. That's the missile fighting style, right? Missile fighting style with dagger proficiency. Um, Trump, how are you looking? Oh, no, Jen, how are you looking? Yeah, I think I got it. So quarterstaff and mace would Quarterstaff work. takes two hands. Ah, oh, but it's a size really... large weapon. All size large weapons take two hands. So I need for... like a medium and a small. And a small. So you'd need like uh, uh... any medium bludgeoning and a hammer. Um... I can get like a mace or a flail. And a warhammer? Uh, you would want a normal hammer. A war hammer is actually a medium-sized weapon. Um, it's a little bit longer. It's a little bit heavier duty. That's not quite the same as your, like, everyday, I'm making a house hammer. Um, you know, a, a dual-wielding cleric is an oddity um, in this world, which it makes you a little bit more special in that way. Um, Oh, what's the other option? I just get, like, a shield and a sword or something? Well, a shield and a mace or something. Quarterstaff? Can I quarter quarterstaff shield? Or? No, because a quarterstaff takes two hands. It's like mace and shield or something. Yeah, you could mace and shield. All right, Neil. So I'm asking kind of a second edition question. Yes. I see that there's some reach two weapons here. Yes. Does that provoke attacks of opportunity if they move in on me? Yes. Wow. Which makes pole arms really, really good. All right, V, you get to uh, take the choice. Uh, would <laughs> you like me to primarily for a melee weapon use a halberd, a glaive, or a partisan? My choices, Albert. Albert, Lave, Hardison. They're all long weapons. They have like different shape endings though. Yeah. And you can specialize in two weapons, right? One, just the one. Even if I have four skills? Correct. Okay. Uh, and sorry, say the last two. Uh, Glaive okay. and right. Hardison. All right, I'll do like a flail and a shield, but I have chakrams to throw. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna your, your, your weapons are going to be a flail and chakram. Okay. Right. Those are the uh, you don't need a proficiency for a shield. Okay. I think the glaive looks and beautiful. What do we want to do with the damage for those? Okay, glaive it is. Um, we're going to let the chakram kind of function as a dagger for throwing purposes. So it will do d4 damage. It'll have a range of 10 slash 20. I'm sorry, uh, a 5 slash 10 slash 15 yards. Uh, it ha will have a speed of 2, a weight of 1, a size of S, and a type of P. Uh, I think a chakram is an acceptable non-bludgeoning weapon for a cleric of Reluna to use. I couldn't have had like a bow and arrow, right? No. But oh, you know what? Yeah, that's totally passion. That's like, that's very passion-esque. Cupid. Yeah. Bow and arrow? Yeah, if you want to have a bow and arrow, um... That's fine. 
yeah, I would I would totally take bow and arrow as a, a uh, an acceptable <coughs> breach of the bludgeoning only weapons right, for a cleric of Luna. Very cool. So just to clarify, the glaive, I can hit someone from maximum range, and then if they come to attack me, I get to hit them on the way in. Yes. Wow, that's really good. A lot of value in that one. Very flavorful for my character. Um, the the one difference, the one problem is that if you're indoors, you're going to have some serious problems using it because it's like a 10-foot pole and you're not going to be able to attack very easily indoors with it. Um, so when fighting in, indoors, you'll have penalties and in some areas, depending on... You know, if you're trying to, like, you won't be able to stab someone around the corner in a in a dungeon with a glaive. Okay. Well, I'd be able to, like, if we're positioned correctly, stab over someone? Yes. Doubles, pitchforks, hammers, sickles, peasant weapons. <laughs> That's what someone's encouraging you all to do in chat. Um, so how are we looking, V? Are you... Have you found the weapon table? Yeah, I did. Okay. I was... Cool. Idiot. That's all. Okay, remind me how specialization affects things for a fighter. I'm sorry, there's two of you talking at once. I'm good, go ahead. Remind me how specialization for a weapon. I'll specialize in glaive. You get a plus one to hit, a plus two to damage, and you get an extra attack every other round. Does that mean, does that stack with my fighter bonus? Um, there, yeah, so every time you level up as a fighter, you get a plus one to hit, and when you hit level seven, you get an extra attack every other round. So when you're specialized with a glaive, and you hit level seven, you get two attacks every round, basically. Wasn't the default to have an extra attack every round anyways? Uh, no, fighters do not get an extra attack every round. Oh, they just get the choice to do that, I Right, see. that's the specialization. Uh, which kind of bow and arrow do I get? Because I'm trying to put the stats down. Um, you could pick a long bow or a short bow. Um, you'll notice that there's not really a difference in them here. The damage is going to be the same. It's based on the type of arrow you use. The only difference is that long bow has a longer range and short bow has a shorter range. Uh, also, short bows can be used from horseback and long bows cannot be used from horseback. So longbow, better range, but you you have to be on the ground. Shortbow, not quite as good range, but you can do it from a horse. Yeah, I'll do shortbow. Yeah. Like short bow. Shortbow um, and a flail and a shield. Shortbow, flail, and shield. Fantastic. No chakra. All right. <laughs> um, perfect. Anna, you, you're figured out. You're doing daggers. Yeah. And V, you are... Uh, I was looking at size. If I could do that. Sai? Oh, like, um, yes. Sai or scythe? Sai. Cool. Like S-A-I, like what Raphael uses? Yeah. Sweet. Yes. <laughs> um, I am all on board with scythes. Uh, we're going to just use the dagger stat block for them, but they will be size. Uh, I think in the book, they pretty much have... Same stats anyway. Yeah, they, they're literally daggers. Actually, they're slightly heavier with a little less damage, but we're going to use the dagger stat block and call them size. Um, so that'll be just off of this chart here. Um, you get a second weapon as well, or you can take some sort of fighting style with the size, if you'd like. I'm trying to think with being a dancer, that might be useful. Um... They're small enough that you could do two weapon fighting, and you could fight with a sign in each hand and get two attacks. Oh, so I wouldn't be fighting in double right now. You would have to take two slots to fight with them in both hands? No, no, no. You can do it with... Uh, if you had... If you fight with two weapons and you don't have any fighting styles with two weapon fighting, um, uh, it is a penalty to hit with your offhand and a slight penalty with your main hand. 
but if you take a slot in two weapon fighting style, there's no penalty with your main hand and a small penalty with your off hand. Mm, okay. um, unless you're ambidextrous like Jen, in which case you are, you know, the world is your oyster. And then we have to roll for that though, right? If we want to try to be ambidextrous. Yeah, it's a one in 10 chance. Oh, uh, okay. It's a, a D10. Okay. Unless you I really, really, that. really want to be ambidextrous, in which case we can probably just let it slide. <laughs> I mean, we let Trump re-roll his stat, so uh, it's only fair to let okay. you just be ambidextrous. Go for it. It's okay. Uh, I rolled them in the front I'm going to try to roll for it first anyways. What okay. do you need to get on a D10? Oh, you got to get a 10 on a D10. That's, it's like a 10. Okay. I'll take it. I want to be ambidextrous too. Okay. Alright. Um, so, you're going to okay, take so... two weapon fighting style and size, and you will be able to uh, make two attacks with a psi every round with no penalties. But if I only take, so if I only take the one weapon, but I can fight with both, I take a penalty though, right? Right. What's the penalty I would take? A minus two with your offhand weapon. Okay. So, where are the fighting styles? Um, they are on purpleworm.org slash rules. And then I can direct you, I can help you navigate through the list, but they, it's done in a stupid way that is make it, makes it difficult to actually okay, link I'm you here. to a page directly. Uh, purpleworm.com slash rules. And then you want to go to uh, players option combat and tactics, the fourth one from the bottom. Okay. And then chapter four. And then fighting style specializations. Okay. And then it just lists the specializations and you have to click on each one to navigate to that individual page. Okay. Um, so it looks like we're all queued up with weapons uh, while V is figuring out this last bit here. So we've got non-weapon proficiencies, we've got weapon proficiencies, we've got stats, we've got On languages. the topic of weaponry, how, yes. how easily accessible would it be to get some kind of sleeping or poisonous start? Um, if you get a, the dart is not too hard to get. The poison's really the hard thing to get for that sort of thing. Um, the sort of poisons that you can buy in stores are the sort of poisons that people, that you'd use for like rats and animals. What you would be looking for is an, an injection style poison um, that specializes in that area. Uh, we have a special poison table that lists those somewhere here. Um, sleeping potion poison. Look. Sorry, I'm a little confused by this still. So I'm looking under fighting style specialization, but I'm not seeing anything. Um, Fighting style specialization. So there should be below that. There's weapon and shield style, one-handed oh, weapon style. Okay. So you have to click on each one of those. It's an awkward way that they do it. Um, okay, so each of those is one. Got it. Okay. Right. So I would. So if I the first one I have, if I wanted to fight with both still, but then I guess I'm confused. What did you say the okay. other one? So if you you're ambidextrous, so yes. if you fight with two, if you, your proficiency is just the psi. You fight with two sides. Your primary hand, your your right hand, is uh -huh. no penalty to hit, and your left hand is a minus two to hit. If okay. you get the um, the the two weapon fighting style, both hands have a zero penalty. Okay. Um, so that would take up two slots for that, right? It would take one slot for Psy and one slot for two weapon fighting style. Correct. Got it. Okay. Um, as for you, Trump. There, the there are no fast-acting sleeping poisons um, that you could you deliver by dart. Um, there is a paralytic that takes one to four rounds, uh, which might work for you. Um, 
and there's a debilitating one that takes one to three rounds to take effect that doesn't, you know, they can still shout and talk and yell so they can still alert people. Um, but the, the fastest acting one takes one to four rounds to, to put someone out. And if they pass their saving throw, they're not quite paralyzed, they're just slowed. Um, so that may not be a, an option for combat. Sounds like a good escape plan. Uh, to acquire some of these goods, you would have to find someone who knows where to get them. Uh, those things are usually kept fairly secret and off the, you know, it's generally frowned upon and usually, uh, while, while they may not be illegal, the law enforcement of the age may just want to r get rid of the people who are selling those things because they don't like them and the world is not Got perfect. Um, so you'd have to get to know someone. Okay. Uh, I think... I have a question. Yes. Uh, how much damage can my bow and arrow... My shirt bow make? Because it's not on the list somehow. Correct. If you take a look at that weapon list... You'll notice that there are two different um, arrows underneath that. There's bow short, and then there's bow short bodkin and broadhead. Mm -hmm. The the bodkin it has a longer range but less damage. The broadhead is a shorter range and more damage. So then you would pick what type of arrows you want to buy, and then you know you could say, well, this time I'm going to use a broadhead because he's close. But now that he's running away, I'm going to switch to a bodkin. Okay, so I'll write down both, basically. Right. Okay. Uh, next up is money, so we can see how loaded you guys are. Uh, rogues, that's you bards. Would you please roll me money. 2d6 and multiply that by 10? 2d6, right? Yes, ma'am. Um, also, V, I think you are in the other roll 20. Let me link you to the new roll 20. And multiply by 10? Multiply it by 10. 60. You are very wealthy. Um, is that gold? That is gold. Woo! Your daggers are two gold a piece. So you can buy a lot of daggers. Um, and then whatever else you want from the gear table at the bottom of that list. I'm so wealthy. Mm -hmm. Money, money, money. Wow, your sister is wealthier. <laughs> Dang it! She gets better tips. What can I say? Dang it! It's not fair. She's also older, you know. Is she? I didn't know. Isn't she the older sibling? No, you're the older sibling. I don't know. We didn't decide. Oh, we did. It's in my notes. You spent it? it all on me. It oh, is. Oh, that's probably it. Yeah. So I will take that extra money. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I spent it on, like, drinks and flowers and stuff, so you don't have the money, but you just yeah. got all the stuff. Consumables. Yeah. Uh, Jen, you've got 3d6 times 10 for gold. And... 3d6 what? Times 10? Times 10. So do 3d6 and just add a zero. Yeah. 70. 70. I want uh, that's to 3d6, please. Add, add another d6 to that. <laughs> that's only two. Oh. Just add one more. So 90, 90 gold. Okay. Uh, Trump, you are 5d4 times 10 gold. Whew. Wow. Uh, that is a very good roll. Nice. 160. Oh, we know who the wealthy couple is here. Oh, <laughs> the Hang it. We don't need money. We got love, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All they want is You're money. muted. I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> That's what poor people say. <laughs> I was saying that we get filet mignon every night. But now all these women are going to be after him for his money, so I got to fight off all these women. <laughs> uh, oh, or alignment. We should pick alignments. Oh, yeah. Um, well, let's, let's do wealth. You can think about alignment. Okay. Uh, now as, as you please um, but let's do some wealth so you've got your money 
That same link that has the equipment, uh, that had the weapons, also has general items under the gear tab and armor if you want uh, to buy armor. Yes. Um, you'll notice the armor is done a little bit differently now. Uh, it's broken into different parts. So if you want like a full suit of leather armor, it's there. But if you just want like partial leather armor, just like a leather chest plate, then you can get that. Or if you want the leather limbs with chain chest, you can get that. And that way you can kind of like mix and match your armor a little bit more. Um, and they've got very associated AC bonuses and costs and that sort of thing. Can um, all of us wear armor? Everyone can wear armor. Um, you bards, you have some thief-like skills that will not function as well when you're in armor. Um, Even leather? Uh, there are... Let me take a look at what skill, what thief skills the bards have. They have... Climb walls, detect noise, pick pockets, and read languages. So detecting noise and picking pockets... I'm sorry, detecting noise and reading languages don't change, uh, depending on what you're wearing. But climbing walls and picking pockets are more difficult in armor. Um, and the picking pockets, you need to be a little bit quiet and stealthy and nondescript, which makes it a little bit harder to pick someone's pockets when you're a little more obvious, and thus the penalty. Um, <sighs> and the climbing walls is clearly harder when you've got crap all over you. Plates is so expensive. Plate is very expensive. Wow. That is so, so sad. <laughs> you know, we should probably know all those proficiencies that you just mentioned for bards, huh? Uh, we, yeah, we can. Well, yeah, actually, that's a good spot to do right now. Um, so bards, mm -hmm. on the second page of your character sheet, if you've got room or wherever you want to put it, actually, you've got four skills, climb walls, Detect noise. Pick pockets. And read languages. And what are have, our checks for those? They start out at 50%, 20%, 10%, and 5%, uh, respectively. So climb walls is 50, detect noise is 20, pick pockets is 10, read languages is 5. And then depending on what armor you are or are not wearing, you will get bonuses or penalties. And then you start with an additional 20 points that you can distribute amongst those. So on our other proficiencies I had under the check, like wisdom or dex or charisma or whatever, is that not how it works? Not for these. If you have high dexterity, it will modify your percentages, but only if you have a 16 or higher. <sighs> Um, and that's actually only for open lock. So you need a 17 or higher in dex to modify your percentages. Did we get open locks? No. Um, Rova, I just meant... Thieves get open locks. Bards do not. So, so our add... other proficiencies are checked with our with our stats, though. Right. Okay. And then we get 20 points to add between those. Between those, right. And then uh, if you are not wearing armor, you also get bonuses to pick pockets and climb walls. But if you are wearing armor, you get penalties to both of those. So read lang oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. I'll say read, that. read languages is a chance to read a language we don't know. Um, read languages is an important ability since words are the meat and drink of bards. They have some ability to read documents written in languages they do not know, relying on the words and phrases they've picked up in their studies and travels. Yada, yada, yada. Um... The read languages column on table 33 gives the base percent chance to puzzle out a foreign tongue. It also represents the degree of comprehension the bard has if he is successful. Uh, so that means if you have a 10% chance to read a language, you make your, you know, if you make your 10% chance, then you understand about 10% of what is in the document. Gotcha. So it's at low amounts, it's not very good. Um, at high levels, it becomes incredibly useful. Okay. Do we get a chance to grow those proficiencies over yes. time? Yes, every level you get 15 points to distribute as you please. Okay. Um, but oh, you guys yeah. should kind of... Right. You should be making the decision now whether you want to generally wear armor or generally not wear armor. I'm wearing it. Okay. Can we take it off, though? At yes, any point? you can take it off. 
Um, so can I ask, what are the extra proficiency, like the pickpockets, what's the bonus if we're not wearing armor? If you're not wearing armor, pickpockets goes up by 5% and climb walls goes up by 10%. So they're not great. But if you are wearing armor, they both go down by 30%. Oh. Pretty drastic. Okay. And then 20 points to start to contribute. And then you said 15 per level we get? Yep. They both go down 30 if you're wearing armor, you said? Yes. Yeah. And you get plus 5 to pick pockets and plus 10 if you're not. Yes. To climb walls. So we're going to need to buy other stuff afterwards, right? I can't just like all in my armor. I don't know what you mean. Like, you're gonna make us buy like the basic stuff we have? Yeah, there's that list of gear and okay. you can buy it or you cannot buy it. You know, if you wanna be a cleric who's just got your clothes and your weapons and your armor and that's it and you rely on Anna to pay your way through life, <laughs> um, that's cool. Knock mm -hmm. yourself out. I'll keep a little bit of money. All right, so I decided on my equipment. What is your equipment? I have a shield, the good one. The aspis? Yeah, the aspis. Mm -hmm. I got a chain chest piece. Mm -hmm. And I got the leather limbs. OK. Because I, I have no money for the full chain. <laughs> <laughs> and you bought your weapon and everything as well, right? Oh. Nope. <laughs> yeah, go buy your weapon. Ugh, you. Yeah. Why yeah. are the freebies? I thought I was from a rich family, and now I'm poor already. I can't remember if I bought the crossbow or not. What? Uh, I don't think you? you bought. No one bought anything yet. Yes. That's it. expensive. Crossbows this are expensive. Not in the plan. Now I can't even have my starting gear. Well, uh, you know, your character's got to start from kind of humble beginnings. And then you work your way into greatness. You know, think of your, yourself as Harry Potter at the beginning of whatever the first book is. You know, you're living under a stairwell. You, you're coming from humble beginnings. You gotta, you gotta have a crappy start. So when you get all your good gear, you've got you like you've love. come somewhere. That's all you needed, anyways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Was there a question, Anna? I forgot what it was. Fantastic. Because I, I realized I can't even afford my crossbow. Ooh. <sighs> it's 35. I had the heavy one. Oh, I can't even afford everything. Neil! Well, you can afford uh, your weapons. Well, And then just get a suit of leather armor instead of chain. I don't want to die. <laughs> you got Trump. I don't want to die. <laughs> You don't worry about it. It'll be fine. It'll work its way out. Fine, so I won't start with a short bow. That's what's happening. I'm gonna need to go buy a short bow. So I have a flail and a shield. Okay, flail and shield for you and armor. I'm writing it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm keeping what I said. Yeah. Um, Anna and V, are you guys both armor-wearing folks? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you guys going with the leather armor? Nice and cheap? Yeah. Yep. Okay. You know what? We're about at break point, so why don't we take ourselves a break? When we come back, we'll finish up weapons, and then we'll delve into kind of personality traits and kind of now that we've got our backstory and our gear, not our backstory, our, our equipment and our gear and our um, our non-weapon proficiencies, that's the word I'm looking for, then we can kind of talk personalities and kind of flesh out that sort of thing a little bit more. Um, so we'll do that in a few minutes. See you guys on the other side of our break. <laughs> 